Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today we have the Femi A3 from Xiaomi. So Femi a division of Xiaomi is probably all aware of. And this drone I've had on order in various different, from various different places for about three or four months now. Finally arrived yesterday, hence why I'm doing the video today. Today's video should have been the giveaway winner for the E61. That will now be tomorrow on Saturday, so that video will be live tomorrow. I just wanted to get this up and running. So, this is probably the most excited I've been about getting a drone for a long time. Because this has potential to obviously be a bit of a landmark drone. So, this is what you get in the box. So you get an instruction manual. So it's a quick start manual. You can download the phone from the internet. Or, and the disclaimer and safety instructions. Get a phone. Right, so in the box itself you get the drone. Set propellers. Battery charger, battery, and the controller. So let's just get rid of the box. Oh, also in here you get USB, charging cable, and the charger. I'll show you that in a minute, like the balance charger connector. So, this is the drone itself. So the drone is of very, very, very nice quality. So the first thing that when I took this out of the box yesterday was how nicely made this thing is. The fit and finish is superb. It's got a nice bit of weight about it. The camera gimbal looks good. The only thing I don't like is that connector there. They've got a connector gimbal somewhere, but maybe they could have done something a bit better. But that's by the by. So it's obviously got brushless motors and it has a two axis gimbal which is 1080 30 frames a second so similar to the spark so size wise because it is quite difficult to tell from this what size it is so here is the Hudson 501s and as you can see it's virtually the same size the 501s is slightly smaller but there isn't a lot in it you can see that there so if, eventually I will do a video comparing the 501 SS with this because they're very similar because of the way they both work. They both work on 5.8 gigahertz. They're both essentially FPV GPS drones and they've both got built-in screens in the controller if you bought the Pro version. It's the controller's even got a similar type of layout. So let's look at the FEMI. So it runs on a 12.75 battery so this is a high volt battery so instead of 4.2 volts per cell they have 4.35 volts per cell 2000 milliamp hours in the back of here you have your usb connection for doing updates and also an sd card slot for obviously recording them so when i do the this video is going to be in like essentially three parts so the first part is going to be what I'm going to do now, overview of everything. The second part is going to be the flight test and the third part is going to be after I've done soft firmware updates. So when I fly this first, it's going to be straight out of the box. No updates, this is how you're going to be when you get it. Because a lot of people don't like doing updates, they just want to fly straight from the box. So that's what I'll do. And then the third video, I'll go through probably all the flight settings and do the updates. So that's the battery in, and this is your controller. Real antennas, which is nice on a drone these days. So you've got a GPS switch and sport mode switch. So sport, GPS. You've got a power on and off for the transmitter. You've got your return to home. This is your menu stick, menu joystick. And on here you have mine set to EV. You can adjust this, so mine set to adjust your EV. And this is to adjust your gimbal. And then you have record start. And you can make one of these buttons do other things because on the bottom of here, Inside there, see if I can open it, difficult to open, but inside there you have what would be, looks like a connector for a servo, so you can connect firework launchers and other things on here, which is hence why it's got these two screws. At the minute, I haven't seen any of these available, but they go on there. So let's turn everything on. I'll turn the drone on. So drone on, controller on, look how fast it connects, this is the best thing about it. So on the minute there it's going to give me some pre-flight 
checklist it's going to tell me my voltage of the RC the maximum speed it's set to the return to home height it's set to what stick mode I'm on which so for me it's on mode 1 hope you can see that okay video channel camera check and the date okay you can see that okay so there are your first things on your screen. So here is your menu control. So let me just show you on here. Let's get rid of them. So let me just show you on here. As you can see, there is no concernable, discernible latency. I'm sorry that the screen's going to look, you're going to get like a, an effect on there. That's because of the camera showing on here and this screen flickering and causing an issue with the camera. You don't see this live, obviously, when I'm looking at it now. There's absolutely nothing. So as you can see, so then you've got menus. So if I click on this button and go across to my left, I've got smart flights. So in here I can set, this is our return to home, auto takeoff, auto land, put it into orbit mode, follow me mode, selfie mode, headless mode, fixed wing mode, and then I can exit my flight mode. So when you're flying, if you want to put it into a different flight mode, you simply flick across here, Go into your flight modes and select which one you want. Quite simple. You've then got camera settings. So as you can see, I've got mine set to 30 frames a second. Picture quality, you can adjust this to fine, super fine and normal. Super fine is going to record it in 60 megabits per second. You can adjust your EV from here, your ISO, you can leave it on auto. Shutter. Your saturation, your contrast your card capacity, you can format your SD card, I always recommend formatting the SD card from here not on your computer GPS mode settings flight velocity, your altitude, your maximum altitude you, if you want to put a flight distance on there the altitude you return to home really simple to use this when i bought this i didn't know how easy this was going to be to use this but it's so easy to use it's untrue it's actually better than having to flick across the app so then you've got your video channel settings your flight mode settings let's go into here so you can have sport mode on or off or altitude mode on or off and then you've got custom settings and that's the right dial so this dial here, I've got mine set to EV, but I can change it to EV or PWM. So PWM will control this under here like I showed you earlier. So if we come out of that, and then calibration. So you can do a compass calibration, RC calibration, and gimbal calibration. This system is so easy to use compared to having to find your way through menus, press the screen, I really do like this. P pair your RC, so if I need to pair this, this is already paired obviously. Flight record. I can have my time for my GPS coordinates and system status codes. You're not really going to use that, I wouldn't have thought much. System settings. So you set your date and time, whether you want units metric or imperial. Auto shutdown is off. Screen auto off is off. So you can save your batteries on your screen. So as you can see, you can do an awful lot of things from different points in this. If you go all the way back, you're out. If I then click up, you can see I went straight into flight mode. So let's just go back. So if I go up on the stick, I'm straight into my flight modes. I showed you how to do it the other way, but this way straight up on the stick. So if you're flying, it really is as simple as doing that. Always go left to get out. If I go down on my stick, it takes me into video. So how to do my video settings. Again, ridiculously easy to do. And then right click. Just lets you start recording. So it really is that simple. So this up the controller. The gimbals feel absolutely beautiful. This fit and finish is very similar to the 4K drone, the Xiaomi 4K, it's the same type of finish on the controller and it really is a nice finish. So on the top of the screen you can see it's ready to take off because it's got GPS lock in here of 11 and that's because I've got a, a glass roof. So you can see all the settings on the top, you've got your flight time, 
you've got your signal strength and at the bottom you have your height you have your horizontal speed vertical speed distance and height from home really is a nice controller so one of the things i'm most excited about about this drone is the fact that i can connect this up to goggles now there's two ways of doing this so inside the bottom here you have oh, i can't open it i haven't got something to open it with but you have in there an sd card slot a usb a slot and also a little jack slot so the little three and a half mil jack that is for connecting this up to goggles so if i wanted to connect these up to my goggles i could use the av in and out port from here and connect it up to this so i could have the goggles what happens when you do that so unfortunately it kills the screen you can have one or the other so as soon as i plug something into there it's going to kill this screen and it's going to appear on my goggles but with full telemetry but one of the best things about this is if i don't want the if i'm not bothered about the telemetry I can just connect this straight up to these. Let's just auto search this. And you're not going to be able to see this very well on there, but so it varies its channel. Don't know if you can actually see anything there at all. It's difficult trying to do this on a camera. No, I don't think you can, or not really clarity. So on here I've got my image out through here. Again, we know latency, but obviously I've got no telemetry whatsoever on here. But the added advantage of this is I can be flying with this, and then obviously I can just I have the goggles on my head, drop them down over my eyes when I'm flying. So I'll probably take off this way and then use the goggles when I'm flying. I think it's the best of both worlds for me. So obviously with that, this is 5.8 gigahertz. This is not Wi-Fi. There is no Wi-Fi connection on this thing whatsoever. It's 5.8 gigahertz analog, not digital. So this screen's never going to look as sharp as it does on your phone because you're never going to get 720 or 1080p HD back but you're going to get what you would do on a normal monitor. You can connect this up to a monitor obviously as well so if you had a monitor, standalone monitor, you could certainly use that or you can use the goggles. Now for me I'll be using the goggles because one of the things you're going to get with this screen in the summer is glare. So you're not going to be able to see this screen that great in the summer on any type. You don't on some phones, you need a mass, you need crystal sky is about the only thing that's going to give you that kind of thing where you can watch your screen that good. So without putting a sunshade on this, I think the easiest way for me to do is I'll fly it with the goggles on. And of course, I've then got no issue at all. So to me, this thing is so revolutionary. Oh, it doesn't seem to be that much different than the 501S, but it does so much more. This thing's got a proper gimbal on here. It should be a damn sight better than the 501S. I've obviously seen some video footage on this and it looks okay. This is not going to be a spark killer. I'll say that straight away because of the video footage I've seen, it doesn't look as good as the image you get from a spark because I don't think there's much dynamic contrast, etc. But it is a very, very nice image. So let me just show you the propellers. So these are the props. They come with the six props, spare of each one. And you can see they're angled up at the end. So you've got red on one, no red on the other. The ones that have a red on go to the arms that have a red on here. You can't put them on the other way, they won't fit. So it's a simple matter of fact of lining up the slot with a slot in here, like this. I'll try and do this wrong handed onto there and turn it round and lock it in place there you go locked in if you try and put the wrong prop on i'll show you what will happen we get a white prop it will go into the hole but unfortunately it won't lock in place it'll just fall straight back off again but still be careful because if you do put them on you might think that looks great so always when you fitted them just make sure you twist them to make sure it's locked so you get six props and this is the charger now, I don't know for definite, but there was problems with this charger because it was only charging it to 12.6 volts, but everything I'm going to do with this will be stock, so I'll be reviewing it stock, we'll do the flight time on stock, and then I probably will start charging the battery with my ISD charger, which will do high volt. But at the minute, we're going to do everything stock, so this is the charger you get with it, and it's your typical kind of... Well, you'd normally be a 3S and a 2S. This is a 3S one. Very much like the B3 you can get. So, that's the drone. 
the video actually took a lot longer than I thought but I wanted to show you in some kind of depth the controller and everything else my initial impressions are it seems awesome for the money it comes in at around 235 the problem you're going to have is actually getting one because it always seems to be on back order everywhere but so far so good I'm very impressed with it if it flies anything like that I think it's going to do this is going to be a massive winner I'll have the flight footage video up uh, next week at some point weather depending time dependence I just wanted to get this up to you nice and quickly but yeah so far massive thumbs up for me have a fantastic day thanks for watching